Welcome to part 27 of this video series. This is part 2 of 20 secrets to happy long-term cruising on a small liveaboard boat. And I believe number 20 is going to be one of the most important. And in the interest of keeping all the videos in this entire series about the same length, I'm going to break this topic into multiple parts. This video being part 2. And a special thanks to those who have already subscribed to this channel. And again, thank you so much for supporting the creation of this video series. If you haven't done so already, then please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos in this series. Okay, back to the list. Number 6. Continuing your education. Okay, I'm not talking about going back to school, although if you did want to, there are lots of courses you can do remotely. But what I'm referring to is basic life and boating skills. With boats, you'll be learning until the day you get off the boat whether you want to or not. That being said, it's more rewarding to also learn proactively as you go. At first, the whole liveaboard lifestyle is overwhelming. It's not just like moving into another house. You're actually changing your whole lifestyle. When most cruisers start out, it's a baptism by fire. We learn because we have to. Being proactive and seeking information about better ways of doing things is an ideal way of continuing forward. There are many resources to learn from. YouTube being one. Uh, and you know, while you're on YouTube, don't forget to watch the rest of my series. It has lots of great information on a great many topics. Okay, so enough of the self-promotion. Some examples of things you can continue learning about are like new technology, better products. There's always something to be gained by researching things like battery options, alternative man overboard procedures, the latest first aid and CPR procedures. Oh yeah, they change. Solar power, green technology, new rigging options, how to do wood varnishing better, maintaining your engine better, and on and on and on. Number 7. Balance. When you start out, your life can be knocked off kilter quite easily. With a new boat, new schedule, new lifestyle, new climate, etc. There's so much to do and so much to see, it's very easy to lose balance regarding your own time and spending it with friends and family. Most new cruisers lose the plot in the beginning, and that's okay. It's part of the whole process. You might go overboard on the social side of things and forget about taking time for yourself, but you'll soon realize that something is not right. Just knowing that balance can be an issue is half the battle. Number 8. Maintaining and increasing the comfort factor. Being comfortable is important. Another secret to long-term cruising is to make your boat and life as comfortable as possible. If you love lattes, make sure you have the equipment to make them. If you enjoy your sleep, ensure that you have the best mattress possible, or at least the best mattress cover possible. Of course, there are compromises with everything on a boat. There's a limited amount of space, and that doesn't mean you can't make your living area as nice and comfortable as possible. For me, I must have cushions everywhere. There's no way I would ever cruise without making a cushy place to sit my butt. In our cockpit, we have cushions, pillows, and blankets. Another comfort factor for me is my bedding and sleeping area. I have nice sheets and a cotton duvet cover. My pillows are perfect and my bed welcomes me every night for a peaceful night's sleep. I have a fan mounted to the ceiling that keeps me cool and screams on all my windows keeping the bugs out. I'm very comfortable. Number 9. Have Perseverance. I doubt there's any cruisers that didn't want to give up on year 1, year 2, and on up. We all have bad patches. There are times when the weather won't let up, something breaks, and we have to wait weeks or even months to move. Or when we get stir-crazy while wintering or laying up for hurricane season. During these rough patches, it's important to remind yourself about the reasons you left land in the first place, and think about all the amazing memories you've had thus far. It's great to keep a journal about a good memory. You know, something funny that had happened, or a line that'll remind you about something fun. Also, take lots of pictures. When things get a bit blah, you can look through your journal and pictures to rekindle the good feelings. The better you feel, the quicker the slump will pass. Number 10. Having some sort of a plan. Having a general plan really seems to reduce anxiety about the unknown. Some boaters have a very specific plan. Now, I doubt that anyone who is living in a small liveaboard boat is going to cruise around the world or spend a couple years in the Caribbean and then head up to the Med. But maybe just going south for the winter or doing the American Great Loop is your plan. Now, I can't emphasize this enough that the plan will absolutely change. 
I can certainly promise you that. But with a general plan in place, there's something you're working towards. Without one, it's easy to, be, to drift around feeling lost. Or sometimes boaters find themselves latching onto other people's plans. Now, this could be good or bad, depending on whether the other boater are doing things in line with your hopes and dreams, and that they want you tagging along with them in the first place. Plans do change, but it's nice knowing there's one in place. There is a lot of comfort in that. Number 11. Proactive maintenance and servicing on the boat. I once read that if you own your own boat, you either need a load of money to pay someone to keep it going, or you need to have the mindset that allows you to enjoy fixing things and troubleshooting. If you don't like fixing things or solving problems, then boat ownership is probably not for you. When you start out, you may not know how to fix anything. People spend years being frustrated and unfortunately many of them even quit because of it. But, eventually over time, most cruisers start to learn how to repair and troubleshoot. And once you do, you can change that attitude to a positive one. Eventually you'll get to the point where if something breaks, you just set out to fix it. Personally, I always get a big grin on my face when I figure out a solution to a problem and I'm able to fix something myself. Number 12. Refrigeration. Yes, many an old salt will disagree with me on this one. And yes, you can use bags of ice and keep them in a well-insulated ice box. But if you're planning long-distance cruising, then ice isn't always available as you would like it to be. If you're doing any type of passage where stores to buy ice are few and far between, you'll certainly appreciate this. Plus, if you're like me, and you like to use ice in your drinks on a really hot day, then you may not be able to keep refilling your glass and keep your ice box full. Plus, constantly buying and carrying ice can be a real pain in the neck. Now, just a quick note about the types of electric refrigeration. There are lots of different methods of refrigeration, but the less expensive electric coolers that you buy at places like Walmart use evaporation to cool. These are very inefficient. Most will cool to about 15 degrees Celsius below the ambient temperature, and that's in a dry climate. Now, what this means is, if you have a really nice day outside, let's say just 25 degrees, it's still going to be 10 degrees inside that cooler, and yep, that means your milk has just gone bad. Plus, that's in a dry climate. They don't work very well in humid air, and I don't know too many long-term cruisers who cruise in dry climates. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and will continue to watch the last part of 20 Secrets to Happy Long-Term Cruising on a Small Liveaboard Boat. And I hope you enjoyed the whole series on living aboard a small boat. If you have, then please subscribe. If you want to see any other topics I have covered already, then I have put a link to each one in the description below. Thank you.